Let's start at the very beginning, and that is by looking at the interface of Das Studio and making it work for you and customizing it in a way that will work for you and us going forward together. Das Studio is much like every other 3D application. Not one layout works for every project and every workflow. And depending on what you're doing, you might need different tools at different times. And this is where workspaces come in handy. So workspaces are basically configurations of where what is in Das Studio. And I encourage you to have a look around and test a few things out and see what works best for you. I suggest we're going to use the one that I favor because it works great for this workflow. It's an amended version of the City Limits Lite interface. This is what it looks like. If you've seen any of my videos, then you know that this is what I work with and this is what I'm comfortable with. That might not mean it works for you as well, but there's a reason why I've set it up this way and why it deviates from the default layout that comes with Das Studio, which is found under Window Workspace Select Layout. This is where you can load in different types of layouts. I believe these days it is the City Limits Light layout. If I hit the preview button here, so this is where I select it. If I hit preview, then Das Studio goes and rejigs things and shows me what it would look like if I now go ahead and click the accept button. Don't do that yet. If you've made any customizations, see if I go and hit cancel, things will go back to the way it was before. So if you do want to follow along and make any adjustments, make sure that if you've made any customizations to your interface already, head over to Window Workspace and then you save your layout so that you can bring it back. So any of these tabs and palettes are customizable and I'll show you a few of the things that come with Das Studio. So if you're a total beginner, they thought Hollywood Boulevard would be a good idea to get started. This is what it looks like. If I hit preview, then the interface looks very, very different than what we're used to. There's actually a workspace and a style. I'll touch on that as well in a moment. But if we stick with this, you can have you can see that at the top left here, they have different tab groups as such. So you start by loading in a figure and then dressing them up. That's what you need these tabs for. Then you head over and you pose them. That's what you need a different set of tabs for and so forth. So this is a way of working that used to be quite popular in 3D applications many years ago. Then there's self-serve. That looks very similar to the one that I'm using, just with, you know, with less options. And it also favors the tabs at the top here. The one that it comes with is, in fact, the City Limits Light layout. If I go and preview that, you can see that there's a lot of tabs all around. And I've taken this and just got rid of the ones that we're not using and added the ones that are important. And that's what we're going to be going through in a moment. If you want to go one step further, then have a look at the city limits layout that favors uh, basically everything Das Studio has to offer available at the touch of a button, including icons on the left as well as the right, as well as all the way on the top row. So if you're somebody who's heavily into icons and likes to have icons for everything that is available, then this is something that you might be looking into. I'm not really an icon person, so I'm going to go start with the City Limits light layout and hit accept and let Das Studio rejig things. And then it comes up with this. Now there's a lot on here. And I say a lot because some of these are doubled up or they're just the same function split out into different tabs. One of those is the install tab here at the top. Install is a way for you to install products directly inside Das Studio. The same stuff we can do with Install Manager or Das Central, but the same functions can actually be done on the Smart Content tab if you wanted to do that. So that is one of those things I find is doubled up and that just adds clutter to my very precious workspace. So I'm going to go and right click on install and then I'm going to go and hit close pane that will go and get rid of this thing. Let me go and do that. And you know, that's how you remove a tab. On the right hand side here, let me just go through and tell you which ones I'm removing and why. There's the aux viewport here. That is kind of a second viewport. If you go and see that I'm moving one, the other one follows. So this is a neat idea if you wanted to keep an eye on what's framed up through your camera while still moving around in the viewport and making adjustments. So that's what that's designed for. I won't be using that. I occasionally switch into multiple viewports here. Just know that it's available. If you go and right click that, hit close pane, then you know that's that's gone. And also you can bring these things back at any time by just right clicking on any of these empty spaces here and then going to add pane and then we could bring back our aux viewport this way. 
there it is. I can also, if you want to rearrange these things, I can go and left click and drag these guys off and just let go of the mouse. And then that creates an empty group here. So a group can hold more than one item. So this is just one. But if I wanted to add the environments tab to it as well, which I'm also not going to use, I can go left click and drag this off and then kind of dock it into here. So now I have an empty group that I can move around and even move it to a second monitor. If you have multiple monitors, you can move that off to the side and then even expand it if you wish. And then if you want to get rid of this whole group, you can just go and click this button and then that goes and takes care of that. So the whole group and all its panes are now gone. Speaking of these groups, let me just go and take the smart content tab here, left click and drag this off. And I'm just going to do this as a demonstration here. If I go and make this uh, slightly larger, uh, many people favor this if they're looking at their figures here, for example, and I'm just going to go and close this thing down here. You can make a group like this completely full screen on a monitor. If you're moving this onto your second monitor and you want one monitor completely filled with your library, for example, you can go and right click up into any of these empty spaces here and then head over to the paint group function and then say fit screen height, fit screen width, or fit the whole screen. So the result is height is this. It fills the whole screen up. If this were on a second monitor, and I'm kind of happy to have that, we can do that. I can also go and uh, use the screen width function. And then my library is spread out completely over my whole monitor, which is kind of cool if you have a lot of content like I do. That is kind of nice, especially if that's on a second monitor. Or you can do both things in the same swoop by right clicking pain group fit screen that'll do the same thing and you can undo that by just going moving the screen and then left clicking one of the corners and just making it smaller again and then it becomes smaller but it's still a separate uh, group tab as such you can also do something else. You can go and right click in here and switch the position of these tabs inside a group. If you wanted to have them in a different place, you can go and hit paint group and then tabs top left, right and bottom. I'm going to go and bring this back to where it was by left clicking, well actually by just moving this around here and then heading over left clicking and dragging just onto this existing tab stack here and then it flips right into place. This is kind of how I like it here. Smart content and content library on the left hand side. Let me go through all the tabs on the right hand side and tell you what I will get rid of. So there's the shaping tab here. There's face transfer, for example. Face transfer is technically a plugin that is a nice functionality to have, but we're not going to be dealing with it in this course. So I'm going to go and get rid of that. Posing and shaping, as well as lights and camera, are all options that we already have access to on the parameters tab. They're just broken out so that you have isolated shaping, posing, lights and camera values. If you wish to use them, they're there for you. I won't use them. I'm only going to use the parameters tab because that combines all of these. So I'm going to go and get rid of those. Surfaces will need, but lights and cameras and shaping I'm not going to use. Feel free to explore them in your own time. They're not for me. Then we are left with parameters and surfaces, and those are very important tabs. And I like to have those actually on the left hand side of my viewport. So I'm going to left click and drag surfaces over here, move that in here. Then I'm going to do the same with the parameters tab. That's kind of my, my third command, my third tab here at the top. This is kind of how I like it. Then we have render settings just above that. Then we have the draw settings and we have the surfaces just above the render settings. And the simulation settings, there for deforce. If we wanted to simulate any deforce clothing, I'm going to go and left click and drag that over here. And I will add a couple of other tabs on the right here when the time comes. So sometimes, like in the simulation settings tab, you will also have a block like this that gives you some more information. Sometimes it says tips, sometimes it says info as well, like in the content library, we're going to come to that. You can click this little mini tab in the middle and then collapse that. So that opens and closes these mini tabs here.
And that is also a nice handy way to save space. There's also something, if you, if you have something like tips, you can also double click that or just single click that in fact, and then it will not completely collapse it. It will still leave the tabs here that might be important every once in a while. So like if we were in the content library, for example, we have thing I've got, I've got it collapsed here. If I go and bring this back, then I have these tips and info down here. So sometimes if I just go collapse this this way, sometimes I need info about a file or about a product and that, you know, we can see that here. So hence we can go and uh, click either of these or click one that's already open, click it, and then it goes and collapses that. That's also how these groups on the left and the right work. If you have something open and you'd like to give yourself some space more temporarily, you can click on anything that's open and then that'll just close the whole pane down. And then it's just collapsed tabs on the side here. And you can click any of these to bring it back. Works on either side. If ever you need more real estate, screen real estate, you can we can bring that back this way. One other thing I'm going to remove from the viewport for now, that's the aspect ratio here. That's this white border that we can see in the viewport. That gives me a preview of what's going to be rendered on my camera. You can remove that over here on this little hamburger icon. You'll find that quite frequently here. That's kind of an additional context menu in Das Studio that if anything has more options than are currently accessible, they're usually hidden under that. If you click that, you find more options of for that pane or for that tool or for that item. And in our case, it's show aspect frame. So if I go and click that, then that white border goes away. But for example, on the smart content tab, it also has this little context menu and it is context sensitive. So if this tab is selected, then this context menu is active just for that. And you can do certain things like content database maintenance that's sometimes necessary and do other funky things here. But if I go say to the parameters tab and use the same context menu, then I have very different options here. I can put things into edit mode, for example, and I can use the move to floor tool and all that. So that's an important, often overlooked menu that we need to be aware of that it's there. I just call it the hamburger icon or the hamburger menu. It's the one with the three lines and the tiny little arrow here. That's that's the one. And you find that literally everywhere in DAS Studio. And quite important functions are hiding down there. Before we move on to having a look at my toolbar here, which I'd also like to tweak, there's something else that I'd like to bring your attention to, and that is how the interface currently looks like. So we have a dark gray interface that's very modern right now, but it wasn't always, like about 10, 15 years ago, kind of light gray and white interfaces were modern and eventually it was acknowledged hey this is really bad for your eyes and we we want to if we like look at photoshop and premiere and those types of apps they really introduced that that people could dim this down and make it darker and that's that's you know that's how that how that started but um, hearkening back to the days in case you are, you do prefer a lighter interface with a different font styling if you head over to window style you can select a particular style from this menu here. So the one we're currently using is called Dark Side, and you have Highway and you have Main Street. Switch to Highway and you'll see things will look very different. And much like before, we have a preview button here that lets us see what this would look like if you'd hit Accept. And in my case, this would now make it much a much lighter interface. And it also changes the way the tabs look. So if you've seen tutorials on YouTube where the interface looks like this, that's the style. You can also switch it over to Main Street. That makes things a little bit larger. Sadly, it's not dark, so we have a light version that's a little bit larger, like the, the tabs here, Smart Content, Content Library and all that. That looks a bit uh, bigger, but it's not as dark as, you know, the dark side one. I'll be working with the dark side one because it works quite well for me. So I'm going to go and hit Accept here. And hopefully that should bring it back to down. No, it hasn't done that, has it? Down. Okay, let's go over to style, select style, nobody panic, everything's good. Dark side, preview first. Ah, very good. Whew. We got away with it. Hit accept and we're back to where we were. If you do prefer to completely design your own interface colors and sizes, take a look at window style 
customized style. I'm not going to go into it here, but just know that it's there. If you do want to go into the real nitty gritty of what the interface looks like, you can really make it your own. You can set base colors, you can set accent colors, make this a bit bigger here. You have an influence over a lot of stuff that is happening here. And I encourage you, if you are one of those guys who likes to tweak things to the very last color, then go ahead and do that. Das Studio does give you the option. So I'm not going to go into it here. Just know that it's there and you can customize quite a lot. I'm going to take care of the toolbar here at the top. I'm, as I said, I'm not an icon man, so I don't really use these icons for creating a new camera, creating, uh, what is that, a spotlight, point light, linear point light. That's actually a spotlight. That was a distant light here, sorry. <laughs> and there's a new primitive and all that. I don't really use these. I like different icons on my toolbar, and you can make that happen under Window, Workspace, Customize up here. That gets us into another very interesting area of Das Studio, and that is where you can customize your menu commands as well as the icons on each toolbar. So you can set custom icons up there if that is your thing. Like uh, I know people who like having the Genesis figure load from a menu icon, and that is possible. You can make that happen. Uh, you can really make it your own. This is kind of nice. It, it does take a little bit of time to get used to it. But uh, my toolbars here, there underneath here, I've got two actually. I've got main and tools. Well, up here, those are options. But under activities, I see this advanced dialog here. And in it, I have something called toolbars. And in it, I have main and tools. So those options correspond to the actual toolbars that are already filled with stuff. So like the main toolbar is the one that we're currently seeing. And it has all these things in it. So it has new, which is this. Then it has a separator, which is that. Then it has the file open icon, which is that, and so forth, all the way over to the very end of that main toolbar. The tools toolbar has the things that I find more helpful, but they're currently not displayed. Notice these are the positions of these tools, but under activities, tools is actually disabled. So if I go and right click on this and say enable this toolbar now, I can go and right click on the main toolbar and say disable this toolbar. And then I head over to apply. Takes a second. And then I can see that my tools toolbar is showing, but not my main toolbar. I don't actually know what happens if you go and enable both of them. Let's find out if that works. Yep, you can also make that happen. You can switch both of them on. I prefer the tool toolbar because it contains the icons that I do actually like using. Whereas the main toolbar, I like to use icons from three products by 3D Universe for that, that I'm going to talk about a little later. So I'm going to go and switch that off once again, because it prevents clutter in the viewport and in the interface. And with that, we're pretty much where we want to be for this course. This is the interface that I prefer. I'm going to go and save it. And it makes it easier for us to not get lost in so many functions that we might otherwise get lost in. And, you know, it just it just it takes time. 3D interfaces are difficult enough as it is. I'd like to reduce them to the bare minimum of what we need. And this is already a lot that we need. Let's head over to Window, Workspace, save my layout. I'm going to go and save it as J masterclass. There we go. Except it says there's already one here. That's that's called that. I'm going to say yes. I'm going to overwrite that. And now it says the J masterclass custom layout has been saved and it can be accessed by window workspace save select layout. There we go. That is it for this part. Take a moment and look at these things and play around with them. Just see if you can find these menus. If you have any customizations that you've made to your current interface, then I encourage you to save them, play around with them and bring your own style back. Play around with different layouts and see what works best for you. So this is the whole point that I'm not saying you've got to use my interface. Try it out and see if it works for you. If it doesn't, then make adjustments so that you remove points of frustration that you come up against in your 3D journey. And, you know, anything that removes frustration makes us happier people and that brings us better art. That's that's the way I look at it. In the next video, we're going to talk about how we can use some of the tools, how we can move objects around in the viewport, how the viewport works, how we can split it up and so forth. And then we're going to deep dive more into Das Studio from there. I'll see you then.